wiki altrightnovelist.com just continuing my thoughts about the conversation the exchange between Hamlet and Ophelia in Act 3 Scene 1 again I've never heard this this exchange really broken down I'm sure it has been it must have been because this is a play that's been written on and discussed more than any other play ever uh, but I haven't really seen this particular exchange honed in on in this way, in a way that, and, and, and in a way that I think is really important in highlighting the point that Hamlet is making here. And I will admit that the point that Hamlet is making here, like so many other places in the play, what Hamlet has to say here is absolutely true. I mean, it rings true on a level that I would prefer it not to, frankly. A lot of Hamlet reaches us in this way, you know, if we're receptive. And that's part of what makes Hamlet so uh, powerful as a character. It, I mean, it makes the play powerful, but also it makes, it lends the character such a power that he has this almost preternatural uh, grasp on uh, what it means to be human in a way that you rarely hear uh, expressed elsewhere by any other character in all of literature. So Hamlet has just finished saying that uh, uh, he thinks that honesty should have no discourse with beauty. Ophelia is puzzled by this. She's either puzzled or the other possible interpretation is that she knows what he's saying is true, but she wants to pretend or make like she's innocent here. And that's not the interpretation that I think most people would have. Most people would think that that Ophelia is uh, just a, a waifish kind of well-meaning girl who really sincerely does love Hamlet and uh, it, it's breaking her heart to have to do this and uh, but she's doing it she's breaking up breaking off with him at her father's instigation and uh, the, the thing is with that interpretation that interpretation really doesn't do very much uh, with the trajectory that we find Ophelia, Ophelia's character on henceforth in the play because Ophelia becomes uh, well, she goes insane, she loses her mind, and when she loses her mind, she gets vulgarized in a shocking way. She starts speaking in these kinds of, these riddles that are, you know, riddle, that are riddled with double entendres, and that seem to display uh, a, a, a def, an absence of innocence. Now, is it just that she's lost her mind? She no longer has control of her faculties and she can't, she's not really responsible for her behavior. That could be said, or it could be said that maybe when she loses her mind, she is, uh, uh, something about her is exposed in a way that hadn't been exposed before. And maybe it's being prefigured here. Maybe Hamlet is correctly, accurately seeing into her something that, you know, she hasn't shown to us yet at this point because she still seems to be just a nice girl uh, who really loves Hamlet and I think her love for Hamlet is not something I'm questioning but whether because Hamlet is bringing up these things about beauty and virtue and how they, sh how they uh, should not have any relation to one another for the sake of virtue for the sake of virtue uh, being able to be salvaged that is, uh, I think, an interesting question here. So moving on, uh, she says, could beauty, my lord, have better, better commerce than with honesty? She, you know, puzzled, seemingly puzzled, uh, seemingly honestly puzzled. Hamlet responds, I truly, for the power of beauty, will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bawd, uh, again, to a slut, uh, to, to a vulgar thing, then the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. And we talked about that in the last uh, part one of this, this video. Uh, uh, um, 
two-part series, which is that it's much easier for beauty to, to do harm to the soul of the, of the person who is beautiful if the, if the person's virtue, uh, the per person's goodness, the person's honesty has something to do, has some kind of relationship with her beauty than if she ignores it. Okay, uh, Hamlet goes on to say, this was sometime a paradox, but now the time gives it proof. This just means, I, I didn't understand this before, but now I figured it out. Then he says, I did love you once. And Ophelia responds, indeed, my lord, you made me believe so. Interesting answer. Uh, is she moved by him saying this? Is she, uh, is she doubting it? Is she cautious about uh, hearing this? If she is, then she has good cause to be, because uh, Hamlet says next. Uh, she, she says, you made me believe so. Hamlet says, you should not have believed me. For virtue cannot so inoculate our old stock, but we shall relish of it. I loved you not. So he contradicts himself. He said, I did love you once. And now he says, no, I never loved you. And Ophelia answers, I was the more deceived. You can imagine that, uh, you know, she, she utters those words quite despairingly. This is, you know, Hamlet being rather cruel here, just uh, absolutely not, not, uh, not letting that, holding anything back. But is he just being needlessly cruel? Or is he being, as he says, at another point, cruel to be kind, cruel only to be kind? Um, and is there something to it? Is there something to what he's saying here about Ophelia? Or is he just I think that the, the standard, the standard way of looking at this here is that Hamlet is just being a dick, and Ophelia is a nice girl, and you know she's she's doing this just because she was prompted to. She has to do it because uh, she's duty bound uh, as a daughter uh, to reject Hamlet in this way, and so uh, Hamlet is just not taking it well. <laughs> that's that's the, the standard way of looking at this. And I think that there's a deeper level to it. This wouldn't just, we wouldn't be hearing these things. You know, these pearls wouldn't be getting thrown to us. This is just, this is absolutely, I mean, it's a truth bomb. <laughs> it's something we don't ordinarily hear, but when you hear it, it's like, wow, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. Beauty will sooner transform honesty from what it is to a bawd than the force of honesty can translate beauty into his likeness. Beauty has this power of corrupting a person's soul if, you know, if she lets it, if she has discourse with it, if she doesn't refrain from having discourse with the beauty. Okay. Uh, I was the more deceived. And then Hamlet says, Get thee to a nunnery. Why wouldst thou be a breeder of sinners? I, my, I am myself indifferent, honest, but yet I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me. The famous line, Get thee to a nunnery, here, uh, which has a double meaning. You know, it means both uh, get thee to, uh, to an actual nunnery because it's, it's bad, to marry and reproduce, and this is the, the anti-sexual Hamlet. This is the MGTOW Hamlet. Uh, this is the Hamlet who, that doesn't want to have anything to do with with married life, uh, with female companionship, um, and he sees the whole thing, at least at this moment, he sees it all as just... Uh, just a, a lousy sham um, and that the best thing to do is just to, to refrain, to stay out of it and he says uh, you know, why would you be a breeder of sinners why would you want to uh, just become a mother and, and bring more sinners into this world uh, and he goes and then he's talking about himself I am very proud, revengeful, ambitious 
With more offenses at my beck than I have thoughts to put them in, imagination to give them shape, or time to act them in. What should such fellows as I do, crawling between earth and heaven? He's ranting, but he's ranting so uh, exquisitely. Who, who goes off on a rant like this, <laughs> with this kind of articulateness and this kind of profundity? It's amazing. What should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven? We are errant knaves, all. Believe none of us. Go thy ways to a nunnery. Um, let's see, is that where I should, where I should end? No, I think I want to go on a little bit further. Um, so, uh, stay away from us. He's, he says that, uh, you know, a, a woman is seduced by her own beauty to become uh, evil and vulgar and wicked. Uh, but on the other hand, men are, being to be a man is to uh, have uh, struggles with pride and, uh, and uh, ambition, and he knows that to be true of himself. So, go away, get thee to a nunnery. Nunnery also is, is uh, uh, apparently slang for whorehouse. So, uh, you know, an interesting, interesting parallel there. Uh, or interesting, what do we call it, yin-yang kind of thing happening there, uh, amounts to being the same thing. It's 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 worthless. Uh, married life is uh, just means breeding more sinners. It's like almost almost a nihilistic perspective on things. Um, uh, let me stop there, and I want to do. I, I think I'm going to do one more segment on this scene because it's so damn good and it's never talked about I've never heard it talked about it anywhere else although I'm sure it has been but I just wanted to give some of my thoughts so I will wrap this up uh, next time AndyNowicki, altrightnovelist.com